Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here. Today we are back taking a look at another Cosmic Eclipse deck profile and today we are going to be taking a look at the new Flygon GX, a new Stage 2 Pokemon GX that we're getting from the new Cosmic Eclipse set. And this is actually the same list that was featured in our recent testing rounds video as well. So if you guys do want to see how this deck looks in action, I will be sure to have a link down below in the description for you guys to check that out as well. And also too, just one more quick plug. If you guys are a fan of Flygon and want to see a bit more of this deck, our Stage 2 patrons and higher over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg actually have a bonus article detailing an additional Flygon GX list that's built a little bit differently than this. So if you guys want to see some more of this, uh, you can definitely learn more about how to access that and support this channel in the process i'll have a link to that down below in the description as well but of course getting back to the deck profile at hand this is flygon gx so let's get into it and see how it's going to look so up first in the deck we do have four copies of trap inch and we are choosing to play the trap inch from dragon majesty this is probably my favorite one that we have uh it has an energy or just a single energy attack for 20 then you take 10 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. Most of the time, the damage isn't super relevant here, but the reason I'm playing this one is because there is a 60 HP one in the new set, but it has a two energy attack, which is like kind of hard to pull off. And then the one that has a one energy attack only has 50 HP, so that means Malamar with Distortion Door and a Spell Tag can knock it out in the late game if you are still trying to sup another Flygon at some point. So that's how we landed on this one. One Energy Attack and 60 HP. Next up from there, we have four copies of Vibrava as well. That might look a little bit odd, but yeah, no copies of Rare Candy in this deck whatsoever. Just four. It's a, it's a very traditional evolution line here. No skipping uh, stage ones. So Vibrava, you know, nothing too special about it. Just 80 HP. Ability says it can't be targeted by supporters which is fine, but you know, Guzma's not around in this format, so the ability's not as good as it was probably in Japan's format when they got it, but yeah, we're basically just playing it just because it's stage a stage one. And then from there, we have three copies of Flygon GX. So Flygon GX stage two, like I mentioned, 240 HP, but its ability here reduces the damage done to all of your Pokemon by 30. So you effectively have 270 HP, which is pretty cool. Also, that means maybe in the late game, your Dedenes have you know, effectively a little bit more HP, making them harder to pick off, especially from something like a Tag Bolt GX or like a Crossbreak GX, I believe is the name of the attack on Reshiram Charizard, I'm sorry, Reshiram Zekrom. So pretty good ability actually. Both attacks cost three fighting energy, which looks pretty bad at a glance, but we do have some ways to attempt to deal with that. But the first attack, three fighting energy does 120. If there's a stadium in play, it does 120 more and you discard it. So 240, it's a pretty good number to hit. You know, you can knock out a Picarom even without the Stadium, which is fine. Um, but you know, once you start factoring in some of the damage modifiers that we have for fighting Pokemon, this attack actually gets quite a bit better because think of Martial Arts Dojo, if you're behind on prizes, you're gonna be doing plus 40. So now you're hitting 280, which means you're knocking out really every relevant tag team that's in the game right now. That's very, very good. So Flygon GX is a pretty effective tag team killer that we have here. Um, it's GX attack is also pretty decent, same attack cost 220, and then it goes through any effects on your opponent's active. So that's nice we can get through things like Keldeo GX's ability to one shot something like that. Um, you know, also this attack can be buffed as well with a Martial Arts Dojo and a Diancy, you can get to 280. So a pretty decent attack, but definitely the first one is going to be the main one we're really concerned with here. So. Going on from there, we do have some other Pokemon. We have four copies of Type Null. So this is gonna be the one, I believe it was Unified Minds. Uh, the reason we're playing this one, it does have a single energy attack cost. And the reason that is relevant is because we don't really play any energy acceleration for basic Pokemon. So uh, it's very ineffective to, or inefficient, I, I guess you could say, to power up some of the two energy attack costs on some of the other Type Nulls that we have in the current format. So. That's why we are opting for this one, just because it does have a one energy attack. One for 20, not too relevant most time, but every now and again, it can set up math uh, to where maybe something else can clean up a knockout at some point. Uh, but from there, we have three copies of Silvalli GX. This is going to be the new one from the new Cosmic Eclipse set. So it's 210 HP Stage 1 GX, has an ability which will look very familiar to anyone who's been playing for a couple of years. Draw until you have five. So it's basically just Abyssal Hand from the old Octillery from Breakthrough. So this is pretty nice. We do have some other cards in this deck that will help us play our hand down pretty low. So this ability is definitely very, very good. Most of our supporters aren't going to be physical draw supporters in this deck. So this is how we can kind of make up for that. 
does have two interesting attacks as well. The first which for two colors does 50 plus 70 more if you played a supporter on your turn. So kind of a decent little two-shotting attack. And that GX attack for the same attack cost, you knock out your opponent's active if they are a an Ultra Beast. So we can knock out, of course, things like Blacephalon GX or maybe the new Naginatal Guzzlord or Buzzle Fear Mess, whatever it may be. Probably Blacephalon GX is going to be the most likely of candidates. <laughs> so this is definitely going to be a very, very crucial support Pokemon, as you'll kind of see once we start looking at some of the trainer cards in this list here. And is also a decent little back attacker if you do want to go for a two shot on something. So from there, we just have a couple of one of Pokemon to round out our list. So up first, we have one copy of Ditto Prism Star. So this is, of course, going to allow us the flexibility of evolving into either Type Null, or I'm sorry, evolving into Savali GX or our Vibrava. And then we have one copy of Diancy Prism Star as well. So this is going to buff our Flygon GXs. You know, Martial Arts Dojo is going to get us where we need most of the time it allows us to hit for 280 but if we are tied on prizes or ahead on prizes we actually need diancy to hit 270 so we're going to do 240 with flygon uh with diancy that's going to be 260 and then the base 10 damage from dojo is going to put us at 270 so you need diancy on the turns that you might be ahead uh to still make your math kind of work out for you uh, from there, we have one copy of Mew, of course, for the Bench Barrier ability. Of course, you know, just to make sure things like Picaram and things like, um, you know, Naginatal GX, whatever it might be, can't snipe our bench. You know, even though we do have Flygon, which helps with that, it's going to be a little bit slow getting out Flygon GX. So in the early game, Mew is going to be a little bit better to fill that same type of role. And then from there, we have one copy of the Dene GX to round out our Pokemon line. Just for that Dead A change ability, it's going to allow us to dump our hand and draw six cards. And so today is actually a card I'm considering going up to a second copy of just because most of our supporters that we want to play in this deck aren't really draw supporters. So a second Dene could be good here. Really not sure what to cut. I found it to be very hard to settle on a, a 60 card list for this thing. There was so much I wanted to include. But uh, at the very least, I would definitely play one Dene. So going on to our trainer cards, we have four copies of Pokemon Fan Club. Really weird support line that we have here, guys. I will throw that out there. You're not going to see your normal four Cynthia, four Lily type of engine at all in this deck. So we're playing four Fan Club. And what I found, I originally had like a normal, like four Cynthia, four Lily. Uh, well, I think it was two Cynthia and four Lily at the time. Uh, sort of draw engine. And I really was finding it hard to get my basics down turn one. And that's really all you want with this deck. Because you want... You know, ideally, I'd say four basics in play turn one, if possible. You want two type nulls, two trap inch, or maybe like two type null, one trap inch, one ditto, um, or something like that. So too often with Cynthia or Lily, I just really wasn't getting the basics I needed down. And yeah, so I, I switched that over to Fan Club, and it's been significantly better. So I've really been liking Fan Club here. Um, it definitely does not feel as good as something like an Elms Lecture, but unfortunately, uh, our type nulls don't have enough HP to really or they have too much HP to benefit from something uh, like that. And also the new Oak card in this set as well doesn't do too much compared to Fan Club either. It's better like if you want to grab Mew as an example as one of your three Pokemon, but most of the time, you know, I'd rather just get, uh, I'd rather have the flexibility of being able to grab a Dedenny with Fan Club. That's something I actually do like about this because if we actually open with a couple of basics as it is and we don't have a follow-up, we can actually just grab, you know, maybe one Type Null and a Dedenne to dump our hand and keep seeing some more cards. So Fan Club, like I said, really been liking this a lot better than uh, Lily, which is what I previously had in the deck. So up next, we have four copies of the new Red and Blue Supporter. This is kind of what makes this entire deck tick. Uh, Fighting Energy is typically a type that doesn't have energy acceleration or very good energy acceleration. And this point in the game is no different than historically speaking. Uh, so Red and Blue is going to allow us to get around that. So this is a new tag team supporter that we're getting in Cosmic Eclipse. And it says you search your deck for a Pokemon GX that evolves from one of your Pokemon and you evolve into it. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't exactly going to work like Wally or something like that. It, you still have to abide by traditional evolution rules, which is a bit of a pain. But what makes this card so good is the secondary effect. Whenever you play this card, you can discard two cards from your hand as well. And if you do, you attach two energy or two basic energy from your deck to the Pokemon you evolved into. So now you guys can probably see how the entire deck comes alive. So in the early game, we're going to red and blue, get out our uh, Savali GX, start putting on pressure with that while we use our manual attachment to start putting those down on our trap inches or maybe even a second type null or something like that. 
So even if we have a Trap Pinch with no energy, I'm sorry, the Vibrava with no energy, we can Red and Blue, get Flygon, two Fighting Energy, and attach a Fighting from hand, and get it powered up all in one turn. So Red and Blue is really what makes the entire deck come alive here. And since we have Savali GX, we can actually still draw cards in a turn, even though we are using our supporter to just kind of search out Pokemon. So yeah, really been liking the four fan club, uh, two, or four red and blue. But then from there, we have two copies of Cynthia to round out our uh, supporter line. So trying out Cynthia right now, just because we still do need some other supporters to be able to attack with Savali GX a little bit more consistently. And also it's good at putting Pokemon back in the deck that you would want to red and blue out. So that is one downside, two red and blues. Uh, if you have the Pokemon in hand that you want to search out, <laughs> it doesn't really work. So Cynthia is a good way we can put this back in deck. Um, so yeah, the two Cynthia feels fine. We don't really want to play a high count though, just because red and blue and fan club are really our primary supporters we want to see throughout the game here. I will say this is a card I wouldn't mind potentially changing to Tate and Liza. Um, just because we have no copies of Switch in the deck, so this could be a way we could um, also give us the option of some switching methods. But uh, Cynthia, right now, just settling on it since it does allow us to see an additional card that Tate and Liza does not. So going on from there, we have four copies of Martial Arts Dojo. So maxing this thing out uh, if possible here. So the reason we're playing a pretty thick stadium count is because you know, not only is this a very stadium heavy format that we're in, your opponent is usually going to have a counter stadium. I think it's important to never be able to whiff your dojo here because we need it with Flygon to take knockouts on tag teams. You, you just have to have it on the turns that you need it. And also whenever you attack with Flygon, it discards the stadium. So it forces you to need an, an additional replacement stadium as well. So between your opponent having stadiums to bump yours or, you know, discarding your own. I like maxing them out at four. It ensures that you have them whenever you need to finally go in with Flygon and start taking some knockouts. So going on from there though, taking a look at our item cards. Up next, we have three copies of the new Challenge Amulet or Island Challenge Amulet. I'm not sure what this thing is called just yet, uh, but it's a tool card. It can only be attached to your Pokemon GX or I think it can technically be attached to anything, but if it's attached to a Pokemon GX, they have a hundred less HP, but they only give up one prize card. And actually, I do have to give a shout out to Russell Lepar. He is the, the one who turned me on to this idea. I uh, wasn't really testing this card prior, and it's been very, very interesting. I wanted to kind of show it off on the channel for you guys. Um, but the whole reason we're playing this card is we're not playing Rare Candy in the deck. So it's going to take us longer to get Flygons out. So during that time, we want to be attacking with Silvalli GX. And by the time you get a Flygon GX finally up and running, a lot of times your opponent's already down to like two prizes. And it's, I just found it to be kind of efficient. I've tried like three different builds of this deck. I've tried, you know, a build with no rare candies and no challenge amulet. Um, I've tried, of course, uh, no rare candies with challenge amulet. And I've also tried a rare candy build of the deck, which is the one that is in our Patreon article. If you guys want a more traditional version with rare candies, I think there are certain things that deck has uh, advantages over this one but that's a different story but if you aren't playing rare candies i've kind of come to the conclusion you absolutely need this card this has been very good uh, this has definitely been the best version of the no rare candy build i've tried out so far so this is going to allow you to just give up one prize with your Silval gx's you know in the early game and allow you in the late game to still be able to um you know have a flygon or two go down <laughs> before the game ends <laughs> Uh, so that's the whole reason we are running. Of course, we can also throw it down on the Dene GX and make it so the Dene is only going to give up one prize if our opponent decides to great catch it or something like that. So Challenge Amulet has been a very, very cool card I've been experimenting with. Like I said, big shout out to Russell Apart for turning me on to the idea. Uh, but from there, we have one copy of Karate Belt as well. So Karate Belt, this is going to be for our Flygons. And it says if you're behind on prizes, your attacks cost one less fighting energy and their attack costs. So that means, you know, we can attack just for two fighting energy, which really isn't too bad. And even if we have to manually power up Flygon throughout the course of a game, Karate Belt can kind of enable, uh, you know, less of a reliance on red and blue sometimes, because if you ever just get like a, an energy preemptively down on Trap Inch, if you just go, you know, at some point when you finally get Flygon out, maybe you've, you've used all of your normal red and blues already, you can just go evolve into Flygon, attach Karate Belt, and now you're fully powered up. So Karate Belt, definitely pretty good here. Between this and the red and blue, uh, powering up Flygon really isn't actually too big of a challenge. 
So going on from there, we have four copies of Pokemon Communication, definitely the best searching option we have for this deck. So this is going to be not only our best generic search option in the game right now, but also too, it's pretty good in this deck because if you have a Flygon or Savali in your hand, you can communicate it back into your deck and then you can, you know, red and blue it back into play. Uh, because like I mentioned earlier, you have to have the Pokemon in your deck to be able to use red and blue. Uh, from there, though, we have three copies of Cherish Ball. Cherish Ball, of course, allows us to search a deck for a Pokemon GX. We're not maxing out this card because it kind of fills a similar role as the Red and Blue. And most of the time, Red and Blue is going to be the main way we get our GXs into play. But nevertheless, there are going to be turns where we want just a Dedenne GX to dump our hand, or we just want to find another Silvalli GX to keep drawing cards with. So Cherish Ball definitely still has a lot of value here. Uh, next up, we have two copies of Great Catcher. So definitely one of the best new cards I think we're getting in Cosmic Eclipse. We discard two cards from our hand and switch our opponents active with one of their bench Pokemon GX or EX. So this is really good, not only at reducing our hand size to be able to, uh, you know, fill it back up with Silvalli GX. But of course, you know, Flygon's I think at its best when it's attacking into tag teams. And if our opponent's trying to force like a seven or eight prize game, we can kind of get around that a little bit and, uh, you know, make sure they can't of uh, you know attack us or, or make sure we don't have to attack into one prize pokemon and then from there just one copy of a reset stamp to round out our trainer cards this deck is a little bit slower at taking prizes this is definitely a deck where you are kind of playing from behind and really you know by the time your opponent gets down to like three prizes is really when your deck kind of comes alive and starts operating at full steam so reset stamp is going to be able to allow you to disrupt your opponent in the late game while you're mounting your big comeback strategy and so from there that's going to be it for the trainers going on to our energy we have two four six eight ten copies of fighting energy to round out our deck so guys that is going to be our look at flygon gx this is definitely a card that probably would be absolutely terrible if we did not have red and blue in the format definitely excited to play around with even more stage two and stage one gx's that traditionally haven't been too good uh just because red and blue now gives pretty much any of these types of pokemon energy acceleration to, to get up and running and like i said guys if you are interested in flygon definitely head over to patreon.com slash tcg our stage two patrons have that exclusive article it details some additional tech options that you can run in either Flygon list, but of course it also has an additional list on there that is built very differently from this one. So definitely head over there if you guys want to learn about how to access that and help support this channel in the process. But of course, guys, definitely stay tuned to the channel. We have a ton of Cosmic Eclipse content coming down the road. And of course, feel free to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this content and consider supporting us over at Patreon or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.